My name is Mark, welcome back to the shop, and today we're talking about degrading horsepower. <coughs> so, uh, what's twigged me off on this one is, is I was at a friend's house and I saw um, an episode of Top Gear where they were loading a car onto a mobile dyno and they were testing the cars and they were comparing brake horsepower and so on and so forth. And something kind of um, clicked in my brain I thought, that's a good point. There's something that people m fail to mention or miss or that people don't understand. And it's about degrading horsepower. So just saying Top Gear or something like that, they'll say, oh, you know, this engine's got 156 horsepower when it was new. Uh, that's new. And 10 years plus, you know, it's fallen to 128 or something crazy like that. And you think, my God, how can this fall so much? You know, you think, well, it's only 10 years old, it's done 50,000 miles. Is the engine wear that bad? And the answer is no. This is um, a misrepresentation of what's actually going on. Now, you might say, well, no, it's not, because they just did the dyno, and this is what they got. So this is a dyno result, and this is the numbers from the manufacturer. Were they bullshitting? Were they doing something like that? Um, no, it's all about how you measure horsepower. So when manufacturers uh, get a vehicle, be it a bike, be it a car, something like that, they uh, do what you call a test bed engine, and you've seen videos like this. Where they will test an engine an engine sat there, it usually doesn't have all the accessories plugged in, so there's no water pump, no oil pump. Generally, a lot of the time, they are fed uh, a supply of oil from an, an oil pump that isn't powered by the engine. Same with the water and the cooling, stuff like that. Um, and it's just the engine. And this is what we call brake horsepower. This is measured at the crank. So what we need to do is we need to scrub that, and we need to put brake horsepower. Now this is the thing, the what they call rear wheel horsepower or actual horsepower is when you measure the engine, um, so the engine is now turning all the components like the clutch and all the gears in the gearbox, it's, if it's a rear wheel drive car or a bike or something like that, you've obviously got your, pri your um, final drive system, be it chain drive, be it shaft drive with the car, you've got um, drive shafts and then you've got differentials and all the rest of it. And then there's the coefficient of friction between your rubber and the actual rollers on the dyno. And all of these things are parasitic losses. Turning your gearbox, all the friction noise and all the rest of it, all the chatter in the gearbox, turning all these components means you lose horsepower to... that power is used up turning these things, you know, all the friction losses and what have you, the noise, so on and so forth. So when you actually test this engine, and um, they're looking for the highest numbers, you know, the manufacturers are trying to make it look like it's the best numbers. And when they started off from day one, they measured their car just saying it said 156 horsepower, then they measured it actually on the car on a rolling road, and it said 136. And you're like, holy shit, now we'll go with 156, we're not lying, we just have to put this B there saying it's a brake horsepower, which means it's measured at the crank, just the engine. And then from then on, they just, con you know, they constantly just carried on doing that. Um, it's a tradition now that they, you know, oh, you know, the Bugatti Veyron's got 1,001 brake horsepower, but that's at the crank, not the actual vehicle itself. So when you actually measure the actual horsepower or the, the rear wheel horsepower, um, just say for this particular example, like I said, it could be 136 horsepower. And 10 years later, when you look at it, it's dropped by 8 horsepower, which is a lot different than dropping nearly by... Um, 30 horsepower here. So when you test these vehicles and like they do on Top Gear, they put the vehicle on an actual dyno, a rolling road. James May or whoever is doing the presenting or whatever might tell you the horsepower that they found on a spec sheet or Wikipedia or something like that that tells them the, the brake horsepower. And then they say, oh, well, it's so, so, you know, it was 156. And now we measured it, it's dropped by nearly 30. It's like, holy shit, it's knackered. No, because if your engine really just dropped by that much, you've got a serious problem, like a cylinder isn't firing or something crazy like that. You know, um, it doesn't drop that much over time. After 10 years, yes, you get wear and it's not as efficient. And usually it's not just wear, it's carbon uh, clogging up. Like, you look at a brand new exhaust, 
the exhaust has an inner diameter like that. You look at an exhaust after 10 years, it might have an exhaust like this, where there's your original exhaust, and all this shit here is just carbon, so you're restricting, that's causing a back pressure and stuff like that, which is making it harder for your cylinders to work, so on and so forth. So there's loads of losses, not just wear. But the, if you measure the wear on an engine after it's 10 years old, you're talking microns. You know, you're talking thousands of an inch, you're not talking six feet or a centimetre or anything crazy. You know, four millimetres out, my God, that's really shite. You know what I mean? So it's a bit of a... You know, it's one of the things where you might think that's a massive change, but you're not hearing the full story. As a uh, motorbike example, we'll look at the MT-07. This is just... I just randomly picked a bike and just looked at the data, and it said 74 brake horsepower there and that was at 9000 rpm so this is just the engine they're testing and you might see it says claimed um, because they haven't got any you know they're not verifying it that's straight from the manufacturer and then someone will do a dyno test and it'll say um, 67 horsepower at um, nine oh bloody hell fire <laughs> at 9200 and it'll say actual dyno test or something like that and that's a 9.4% difference between the two. You know, that's an awful that's an awful lot different. And I think this was done by Motorcycle News. So this is when they went and bought a brand new MT-07 to review it and all the rest of it. Stuck it on a dyno. And you can see the difference between the two is, like I say, it's 9.4%. You know, it's, what's that? It's seven, seven horsepower difference. Straight from the fact, you know, straight from the factory to the dealership to you. And you've already lost seven horsepower. You haven't lost seven horsepower. The bike itself is chewing up that horsepower in gearbox losses, uh, how slack your chain is, the coefficient of friction between your, your, you know, your actual tyre and the rolling road, stuff like that. There's loads of losses. And generally on a rolling road you are actually carrying the weight of the bike, um, where on a dyno you've basically got the engine bolted down and you're just testing what the actual engine itself can do. So, yeah, you know, don't be shocked by this. You've just got to understand what brake horsepower means versus... You know, they should really be writing rear wheel horsepower and brake horsepower. And for specs and stuff like that, really, they should never even write the brake horsepower because whoever runs an engine completely on its own. Anyway, that's my video on degrading horsepower. I hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.